If you want to be able to get off this trail and get out into the wilderness and be able to do so with confidence, you need to be able to walk in a straight line. In this video, I'm going to give you five different key areas you need to put in your kit bag to give you confidence to do just that. Every year, thousands of search and rescue operations are conducted to return the injured, wounded, or lost. I'm Bill Stoker, and I'm on a mission to teach wilderness navigation and survival techniques so that you don't become a statistic. The time is now to master your craft. All right, welcome back to the channel, friends. As always, it is good to see you. So Stoker here, and today that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about a few tips that you can put into your kit bag. That way, when you get off trail, you can move in a straight line with confidence. And if this is your first time here, if you wanna stay stoked, then subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, and you can stay up to date on some future content. All right, so I've only got a few tools, a few instruments in my hand. I've got a compass, I have a protractor, I have a map. I have a notepad. I know where I'm at. I know where we're gonna go. So we're gonna plot this down real quick and then we'll go over the six different things that you need in your kit bag so that you can move out in a straight line. All right, let's go ahead and plot where we're at, figure out where we're gonna go. All right, so I know that we're at uh, 3830129 or seven and we're gonna go to the top of this hill at uh, 38411238. So real quick, I'm gonna get this thing uh, plotted out. We're gonna get a grid azimuth first, and then we'll do our conversion, figure out our distance, and then we'll go from there. Grid azimuth is 100 and we'll call it 74 degrees. G174 degrees. And it's going to be a distance of 600 and call it 610 meters. Double check declination diagram here. So to convert grid to magnetic, we're going to subtract the GM angle. So it's 174 minus. 17 and a half. So that's 156 degrees. Right, so the first tried and true method of staying on a straight line and being able to move out with confidence is knowing how to preset your compass. So I know that we're gonna move out at 156 degrees. So if I'm gonna use a lensatic compass, you know, you have to do this every single time that you move out. It's not like having a base plate where you can have your declination dialed in all the time. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit and I'm going to orient my body at 156 degrees. And I'm gonna rotate my bezel ring until the north seeking arrow is in line with the tritium marker on my bezel. Now what that's gonna do is this gonna enable me to move out and if that bezel ring, if they become un in line, if I drift left or if I drift right, it's gonna tell me that I'm moving in the wrong direction and I can reorient myself so we can move out in the right direction, right? So everything's set in place. So as I move forward, I can put my compass down away. I stop maybe 100 meters from now and I look down and as long as those two lines as long as the tritium marker on the bezel ring and the tritium marker on my north seeking arrow are in line, I know that I'm still moving in the same direction. But if I happen to have started to move off because of all this brush and the vegetation, now I look down and those lines aren't joined anymore. So I know that all I have to do now is just reorient my body and everything is gonna be, all right, I'll start moving in the same direction direction. Right, and this is especially helpful when you're moving at night under low light conditions. You can look down at your compass anytime you need to and you're just making sure that these two markers are aligned. And with thick heavy brush like this, it also comes in as being a really good tip. Because what would be better than having a preset compass or in addition to a preset compass, uh, I can use a steering mark. Now I don't have anything to use as a steering mark out here. But if there was a major terrain feature that I can see out in the distance, I can put my compass down and just walk in a straight line 
to that marker. Maybe it was a water tower that's on my azimuth. Maybe it's a building that's on my azimuth. Whatever it is, as long as it's on your azimuth, then you can walk to it. It could be before or it could be after. You just want to start walking online towards that terrain feature and it'll help keep you on a straight line. Now as you're going to see as we step off and we start heading towards our destination there's another key thing that I can use in my kit bag to make sure I'm moving in a straight line and as I'm sure as you could see that on the map where we're moving to is on to the top of a hill right so I can actually use some terrain association I can see a hill on the map so as long as I'm moving uphill I know that I'm moving in the right direction if I start to move and I start to work my way downhill or I'm starting to move uphill and then I'm moving downhill I know that I'm moving in the wrong direction I just need to reorient and start moving back up towards the hill and it's that easy and so the next really easy thing that we can put in our kit bag and this is huge especially if you go to maybe it's like a SF course or other assessment selection course and you're not able to, to use some roads to walk down and you want to put something in your kit bag that you you still can use the roads even though you're not walking on the roads and that's called using a handrail so as we look on this map I can see that there's a road right here here we are and then here's this road that cuts back down around to the top of the hill I could walk and you instead of walking in a straight line through all this thick vegetation which might take a little bit longer I could use my brains and my wits and I could use this road as a handrail or just walk on the road uh, and then just take a distance maybe from this junction to the top of the hill if I was looking for something specific or I could just use it as a handrail and I could walk around I'm not walking on the road I'm just making sure that that road is in earshot or or with an eyesight I can see the road off to my right and I'm just walking up the hill looking for my top of the hill right there right too easy man that one's huge and it can save you all kinds of time you're not you're not really moving in a straight line from here to there but you know where you're going and so you're kind of making sure that you're kind of moving in a straight line just a little differently right and last but not least I'm going to give you two things that you can put in your kit bag to stay on the right distance to know how far you're traveling because yeah you need to be able to move in a straight line but part of moving in a straight line is that distance right so just like we got on the map we got distance and direction so we know how to stay on a straight direction or move towards a direction but we need to know how to make sure we're moving the right distance and the first way is to be able to utilize your pace count so I know that my pace count for a hundred meters is about 65 paces right 65 paces is my pace count you need to know what yours is so as I look at this I can see uh, we said that our distance was 610 meters 610 meters if I divide that by 65 is 9 we'll call it 9.4 almost nine and a half I'm gonna call it nine and a half uh, so I'm going to walk my 65 paces nine times and then I'm going to walk uh, a half of that, right? So 65, I know we're going to call it maybe 30 some odd paces and I'm going to be on point. That's how I'm going to keep moving on the right distance that I'm trying to get to. Because you may not have steering marks. You may not have anything out in the terrain that you can use. You may not have some handrails that you can move or some other junctions of major road intersections or anything else that you can use. You have to know how to maintain your right distance on that direction that you're moving. But another tip that we can put in our kit bag is what's called a backstop. And a backstop is really just kind of a safety mechanism that says if you go to this place this junction maybe it's a stream maybe it's a power transmission line maybe it's a, a railroad uh, line that's put in maybe it's a road an interstate a highway uh, something that, that's just a solid linear feature that you can identify on the map that you know that you're going to be able to see uh, that you can be used as a backstop and you know that you're not going to go anywhere further than that that way if you do drift left or you drift right and you get off your azimuth you're bearing a little bit it's not a big deal because this this road is going to keep you from going too far now as we look on this map we can see that I have this road right here that's right on uh, to, I mean my points like right there on the road and so if I start to drift to the west and I'm coming down 
and I hit this road, I know I can't keep moving just because I haven't seen the point. Similarly, if I start to drift to, towards the east and I come down, I hit this road, it's like, wait a second, there's something going on here. I need to stop, I need to reorient myself and figure out exactly what I need to do to get from where I'm at to where I'm trying to go. So backstops are a great thing to put in your kit bag to help keep you moving in the right direction for as long as you need to. Right, and so with all that being said, let's uh, pack up and we'll, we'll move out and we'll go towards our destination. Here we go. Now I don't have my pack on me uh, to keep everything secure, so I just kind of got everything off in my pockets and whatnot, but I don't recommend that you do that for a couple reasons. Um, first off, you know, you don't have things like water or anything else in your kit to uh, take care of any emergencies. You, know, you start getting off, off the beaten path, off the trail, you know, you need to be able to account for a few different things. And it's going to be super important that, that, you, that you do that. Don't, don't do this at home. Um, <laughs> see what the wife says. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going that far, and you know, truth be told, what I'm doing is in a, a pretty controlled environment, uh, so long as you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, there's no such thing as a controlled environment. You know, because you may find as you're working through that it might be easier sometimes to use a game trail, which may take you a little bit off azimuth, uh, but as long as you have a good mental note of how far you're moving uh, in that particular direction on that trail, you know, you can always stop, take an account again, figure out where you're at, and then pick up a new azimuth. You know, and it's, it's this right where I'm at. This is why you have to be able to trust yourself as you move off trail, off into the wilderness, because I just came across a little trail right here that's obviously not on the map. It cuts, it cuts out both ways here. This, and uh, you know, I know that I'm not on my backstop yet because I've only moved about 200 yards. I got a lot further left in me. I gotta keep booking out here. So there's no chance that this road right here is my backstop. So if I didn't trust my distance, if I didn't trust my direction, I might get confused right here and turn around and go back through all that. And I'm not doing that, brother. I gotta trust myself. So that's where we're going and let's do this. It's not been super steep on this elevation change, whoo! I'll tell you what, man, that's why you gotta be stinking careful out here, bud. Uh, there's all kinds of fallen trees out here, and there obviously hasn't been a fire in a long time to clear any of this low growth out, and you really do need to be, you need to be careful, man. That's a super easy way to uh, twist an ankle, to hurt your knee, and be able to be stuck out here uh, with no cell phone service. That would, that would, truly, that would truly suck. But as I was saying, there hasn't been a lot of huge elevation change coming up this slope. But I know that if I kept moving in a direction, in the wrong direction, I'm eventually I'm going to start working my way down. So as long as we're moving long, slow, and steady up this hill, I, we can see that, you know, there's not that much uh, elevation change coming up this hill. Now, I lost my pencil a while back, but if we get back over here and look at this, we can see that from the north side of this hill, it's gonna take me over a thousand meters to work my way up until I hit um, where we're going on the, on the backside line where this road is. And so it's not, it's not going to be steep. I didn't expect it to be, but if I started to move away from it and I wasn't moving uphill at all, then I would know that we got an issue. Uh, let's get out of here and not twist an ankle. Ugh. Getting too old for that. So I just hit my 900 meters. It shouldn't be that much further. I'm gonna guess, I mean, it's gonna be less than 50 meters anyways. 
and uh, I should I should hit this backstop, and then should be able to put the camera down, take a look around a little bit, and see if we're in the vicinity of where we should be. All right, so made it to this road to the backstop, and I want to try to see if I can find something uh, that was on our azimuth on this backstop that we might be able to use to help make sure that we're kind of where we thought we should be. And if we look on the map here, we can see where this road cuts off to the east, this little bend in the road. So I'm, I'm going I'm to drift off down the road this way. I'm going to drift off that way, about 25 meters each way. I want to make sure that I can kind of find this spot. So I think, ah, look at this. Even though I came out unprepared, nature provided. So I'm going to take these purple ribbons here and I'm going to just tie them on to this branch and then I will know exactly where I came out from the woods. All right, so I'm going to go, I'm going to check down this way. I'll be right back. I walked down at least 25 to 50 meters, didn't see a thing. Let's go ahead and check down this way. Just want to keep a lookout for signs. Folks definitely been out here riding their horses. Pretty interesting. Right back behind me. Right back behind me. I got this bend in the road. And that's, that's awesome news because that means that exactly, almost exactly where we came out at is exactly where we were trying to go in the first place. So I know where we're at. And man, that, that is the first principle or fundamental of land navigation is you need to know where you're at. And since I have this bend behind me, I can plot from that bend even though I don't actually have anything right here uh, to be able to, to identify. I do have that bend in the road and we can plot from there and make it back. So on the way back, I think I'm going to take it the easy way and man, we're going we're gonna to use this road to get back uh, back down through there because that was, that was a little bruh. That, that was a little bruh. What is a bruh? That was a little tough. Hey, so let me know a couple things uh, down in the comments below. If the the, the the if the content, if I can learn how to talk, if the content of the video was uh, was helpful, uh, leave a comment. If you thought it could have been done a little bit better, leave a comment, and we will keep this conversation rolling. Man, I appreciate y'all's time. Hope that y'all have a great and fantastic rest of your day. And as always, until then, we'll see you. There's only so much fun you can have on this trail, so if you want to get off, hey, sometimes trails are for wussies, and we need to be able to get off the track and get out in the... <laughs> Man, sometimes you need to be able to get off the trail. Off... In this video, I'm going to give you six, five different key areas, give you five different components.